Hi, I'm Damien Wilmot from Fly By Night Guide Service and today we are going to tie one of my favorite Upper Brule River brook trout dry flies and this fly is a variation of the Royal Wolf and it's a fly that kind of developed back on the Brule decades and decades ago and, um, and it, it works, it's a great fly. We're going to start out with a Tiemco, this is going to be tied in a size 10 a Tiemco 101. I prefer the straight aid, the straight eyed dry fly hook as opposed to the bent eye, but that's just a personal preference. Moose mane is a very nice stiff tailing fiber. The wings are going to be fluorescent orange calf body hair, and what I do with this is I set it up in my window and I let the sun bleach it out from what its original color is for a few weeks before I use it. Um, the body is peacock harrow, and we're going to use brown rooster saddle for, for the hackle. So we're going to start out tying this fly. I use just um, regular orange 6 aught unithread, and we're going to start out by creating a base of thread all the way along the shank, all the way back to just above the barb is where you want to stop. I'm going to come back forward a little bit, and I'm going to take my moose mane. I'm just going to cut, uh, trim out about maybe a dozen or so fibers, 15, something like that. Just a nice small little clump. We're going to put those in a hair stacker to even them up so we have a nice even tail. We're going to lay those down. We want those to be oh about half to three quarters the length of the shank of the hook sticking out beyond the hook. And again, we're going to tie this in. We're going to secure it right back to just right above the barb of the hook. Come back forward. I tend to leave a fair, fair amount of that material, come up about halfway up the shank to kind of give the body a little more bulk. Trim off the tag ends there. Now the next thing we're going to do, we're going to come up to about the two-thirds to three-quarter length, or a quarter to a third back from, from the eye. We're going to take a nice clump of this calf or calf body hair. And this is a size 10, so we're going to need a fairly good size clump of this wing, of this for the wing. And again, we're going to stack this so the tips are nice and even so we have nice uniform wings. Pull that out of there, and the height of the wing, you're going to want approximately the length or almost the length of the hook shank. We're going to pinch that down, and we're going to do a couple of loose wraps to get it kind of all gathered together, even it out on top, and then you can kind of cinch it down and get this good and tight. Um, you can add a little drop of Zappa Gap at this point to kind of secure that wing so it doesn't come out, but usually this calf body hair stays put pretty well. Next what we're going to do is we're going to pull this up over the top and build up a nice ramp of thread right in front of this wing to make it kind of stand up a little bit. Once we get it where it's standing up like this, we need to divide this wing about half and half and do a couple of figure eights through there. Once you get those divided pretty well, you want to make a few wraps around the base of each wing and this is kind of the tricky part when you're tying these flies. You have to be somewhat gentle so you don't don't pull it over the wing. Come 
it back around a couple times and we'll get this one. Once you have that secured, now we can go back and I just kind of the, the leftover trimmings from that wing, I just come right across the top of them and get them nice and tapered out. When I get back to about here, we're going to add about three or four or four or five for this since it's a size 10 strands of peacock. And we're going to trim about three quarters of an inch or so off the tips there because those tips tend to be a little bit brood, a little bit brittle and they will sometimes break if you tie them in right at the tips. And come back over that peacock again right to right above the, the barb of the hook. Now we're going to come back forward to just behind the wing. We need to leave a little bit of room there to tie our hackle in. But we're just going to palmer this peacock right up the shank. Secure that good a few wraps over the top, pull it back and come back behind it to kind of capture that peacock between the threads so it stays put. Next we're going to select a, a piece of hackle off of this cape. And you want the, the length of the the length of the, the hackle fibers to be about one and a half times that of the gap of the hook. And that gives you a nice proportion on your, on your dry flies. I'm going to just strip a little bit of this off the, the front so you have kind of a, a bare, bare stem there. Trim it and tie it in, of course tie it in with, with the shiny side up so your hackle lays properly. Secure good and bring the thread to the front. I'm going to do about four or five wraps behind the wing. This fly is really meant to be a very bushy, high floating fly. And then come in front of the wing in another maybe five or six or seven wraps up in front of the wing. it off and what I usually do at this point I just get a few wraps in front I bring that double it back over itself and then just a little pull you don't even have to get in there with the scissors at this point whip finish now you can go in and there's a few few hackle fibers sticking out of the eye of the hook or by the eye of the hook you can clean those up if you'd like all right, so now we're going to put the hot spot in, and um, and this is kind of a unique way of doing this. A lot of guys will put the hot spot in; they'll put a couple of wraps of peacock in the back, then they add their hot spot, then put peacock in again and come forward. I just run peacock up the whole body, and then when we're done with the fly, I'm going to just take my orange thread, and I'm going to just start right over the top, just as we would when we're starting the fly, and secure that. And again, we can just break that off, and then I just build up a nice band of this orange thread, and the orange thread is kind of the, the key to the burnt wolf, the orange thread and orange wings. So we have that hot spot there, and then once you have a nice even coating of thread over that peacock, then you can just go in with your whip finish tool right over the top in about five or six or seven wraps, and there it is. It's done. It's a very easy, very simple, and very effective way of putting the hot spot in on any of the wolf patterns.
And one of the great things about the Upper Brule River is it's brook trout especially, but also it's brown trout to a certain extent, are uh, very, um, very perceptive to eating dry flies. And this is just a great searching pattern when there's really nothing going on on top that would make you want to fish, per se, a sulfur or a brown drake. There's just no bugs around. Um, even though you don't have those bugs, the brule trout do look up, and this has just been one of my favorite searching patterns for, for, for trout on the upper Brule River for a dry fly. <laughs>